Hello everyone, this uh, video is a revision video for uh, all students of CA final, old course as well as new course for the subject of financial reporting, topic financial instruments. Financial instrument, one of the most uh, looked after topic because uh, A has a weightage of 15 to 20 marks both in new and old course. It is also one of those particular topics uh, which uh, does affect a lot of other chapters and is also one of the topics which is uh, termed as the salt of Indies. In fact, this topic ko samajhne ke baad hi, you will be really able to appreciate all the other topics and that is why I in my class take this topic, the first topic just in fact after the schedule 3 discussion what we do just to get an understanding of how Indies works. I have already shared one video on Indies 32 because you know Indies on financial instrument is basically divided into three Indies which is 32, 109, 107 where in days 32 talks about presentation of financial statement. Just ke liye already there are two videos which I have shared on YouTube. And if you look about, uh, look at these particular videos, this is uh, what they should be looking like. So you have part 1 and part 2 where I have tried to simplify the financial instrument in days 32 portion, which primarily once you see you will get a good idea in terms of what I classify or what do I term as financial asset, what do I term as financial liability, what is equity instrument, what do I mean by financial instrument, certain specific terms like uh, portable financial instruments, proportionate share in net assets kind of assets, non-financial items, when non-financial items classified to be a financial instrument. Uh, in fact, when a contract of non-financial item could be a financial instrument contract uh, and other things like buyback accounting, a uh, little bit about accounting for interest, dividends and uh, accounting with respect to equity. These two particular lectures will give you a complete idea about Indies 32. However, what we are going to discuss here is not Indies 32. That is something which we have already kind of covered. This video is on Indies 109, which is financial instruments, recognition and measurement. Now, naam se aapko samajh mein aana chahiye recognition and measurement ka matlab ho gaya ki in fact accounting puri ki puri is indices mein cover hogi. Now, when I talk about accounting for financial instruments, what do I mean? So, you should have some basic idea about what do I mean by financial assets and liabilities. Basically, indices 32, agar mein dekho to wo kehta hai ki financial instrument is a contract that creates a financial asset for one party and a financial liability or equity instrument for another party. Which means there should be a contract and it should give rise to financial asset for one and the liability or equity for another. Plus, please remember, we don't accounting financial instrument, we don't do accounting financial asset or financial liability. Ki karte hai. Equity ki accounting is very limited, prescribed in 32, mein 109 primarily financial asset or financial liability. Ki baat karte hai. So, financial asset essentially, fir kya hua? To uski definition hai, it is cash, equity instrument of another enterprise or a contract to receive cash or equity instrument of another enterprise. Very briefly, if I talk about the definition, it also says a contract which involves an exchange of assets under conditions that are potentially favorable, which is like when I have a shirt and 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 I could say that is also a type of financial asset. However, let's not get into those nitty gritties because that Indies 32 already kind of covers about. What I'm going to talk here about is the accounting aspect of these things. A financial asset ki accounting kaise hoigi? So before I start with my revision, I'll just give you some very basic inputs and quick tips so that you first understand and we are on same line so that we can interpret this particular revision video faster. I'm just going to be using only English in this because a lot of friends from uh, certain parts of India including South India, North and Eastern part of India requested for a complete uh, revision in uh, English language. Uh, so I assume that this is something which will be convenient for uh, all the masses uh, and I will actually request uh, that you please share your views uh, whether this uh, pure English language video or revision video lectures are fine with you. Uh, accordingly, uh, the next part I will kind of retune based on your uh, 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 inputs on it. So, uh, talking about accounting for financial asset, financial asset ki accounting mein kaise karunga, financial liability ki accounting kaise karunga, ye hume 109 mein samajhna. Ab aap ek chiz samjho financial asset kya hai, mere paas cash in hand hai, wo financial asset hai, done. Mere paas kisi company ke equity shares hai, wo bhi ek financial asset hai, done. मेरे पास एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है जिसके अंदर मुझे किसी से कैश या उसके इक्विटी शेयर्स मिलने हैं तो वो भी मेरे लिए एक फाइनेंशियल एसेट है इसका मतलब क्या हुआ लेट्स से फॉर एग्जांपल ओके से फॉर एग्जांपल दिस इज ओके ये मेरी तिजोरी है और इस तिजोरी से मैंने क्या किया कुछ पैसे निकाले और ये पैसे निकाल के मैंने किसी को दे दिया तो से फॉर एग्जांपल मैंने छोटी है अपनी तिजोरी ऐसे भी तो uh, ये मैंने क्या किया आई हैव गिवन माय कैश टू अनदर पर्सन 
अब भाई मैंने ये पैसा यहाँ से निकाल के इसको क्यों दिया सी फॉर एग्जाम्पल इसके बदले में ये मुझे गुड्स देगा तो से ही सेज दैट आई गिव यू गुड्स आई एम वॉन्ट टू बाई दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू बाई दिस पर्टिकुलर बुक दैट्स वाई आई पेड दिस मनी अभी इसने ये गुड्स मुझे दिए नहीं है तो मैंने अपनी बुक्स में क्या दिखाना है एडवांस टू सप्लाई क्या ये फाइनेंशियल सेड है नहीं बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट गिविंग मी अ राइट टू रिसीव कैश तो इट्स अ कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव कैश और इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ अनदर एंटरप्राइज आई हैव कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव गुड्स विच इज नॉट कैश हेंस द मनी विच आई हैव गिवन टू दिस पर्टिकुलर पर्सन इन माई बुक्स आई विल शो एज एडवांस टू सप्लाई विच इज नॉट अ फाइनेंशियल सेट वन जीरो नाइन डज नॉट अपलाइज हाउ एवर आई से यू टेक दिस मनी एंड यू गिव दिस मनी बैक टू मी आफ्टर से थ्री ईयर्स वाई uh could be that i have given this money to this particular company which is the borrower and against this it has given me a, a, a debenture a debenture debenture me kya chalo let's say for example ye padha hai mere paas hai na ye hamara curfew pass hai to ye mujhe you samajh lo ek certificate is tarah ka mujhe isne de diya and this is the certificate which i have got in return of as a consideration of this money which i have given to this party now in this particular certificate what do i get so what am i getting is sir uh, here this certificate is a debenture let's say and it says that uh, i have right to receive a 10% interest on the money which i have given every year for next 3 years and after 3 years i'll be getting back my 100 rupees say for example what i have paid to him so this instrument is nothing but actually a a a a a a you can say a contract consequential document which is giving me the right to receive interest for 3 years plus my principal back मेरी बुक्स में मैं अकाउंटिंग क्या करूंगा आई विल सिंपली क्रेडिट बैंक हंड्रेड रुपीज वट आई गिवन टू हिम एंड आई डेबिट दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट इन डिवेंचर्स हंड्रेड रुपीज नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ डू आई अकाउंट दिस हंड्रेड रुपीज ऑफ डिवेंचर्स इन माई बुक्स इज इट अ फाइनेंशियल सेट ये वाई बिकॉज दिस इज गिविंग मी अ राइट टू रिसीव कैश अब मुझे राइट टू रिसीव कैश मिला है ये मेरे लिए डिवेंचर एक फाइनेंशियल सेट है तो मैं इसे बुक्स में अपने कैसे रिकॉर्ड करूँ सर इसमें कौन सी बड़ी बात है सिंपल सौ रुपए पे दिया है सौ रुपए पे रिकॉर्ड करो हर साल दस रुपए का ब्याज मिलेगा दस रुपए के ब्याज को इनकम बुक कर देना आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स अगेन बैंक अकाउंट डेबिट टू आपका ये जो भी इन्वेस्टमेंट है ये क्रेडिट हो जाएगा एस एन सेट दैट्स अबाउट इट दिस इज अल अकाउंटिंग ठीक है बट नाउ लेट मी गिव यू सम वॉट एफ्स ओके लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल ये जो डिवेंचर मुझे इससे मिला है मैंने इसे दिए से फॉर एग्जाम्पल हंड्रेड रुपीज और इसने जो डिवेंचर मुझे दिया है ये दिया है ऑफ अ फेस वैल्यू ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड टेन रुपीज डिस्काउंट पे इशू वाइड एडवेंचर सर हो सकते हैं क्या हाँ शेयर डिस्काउंट पे इशू नहीं हो सकते डिवेंचर हो सकते हैं मे बी इसको कुछ अर्जेंट नीड थी इसलिए इसने मुझे दे दिया फॉर वट एवर रीजन तो फेस वैल्यू डिवेंचर की एक सौ दस है तो सवाल यह है कि मैं इस डिवेंचर को अपनी बुक्स में इन्वेस्टमेंट कितने पर रिकॉर्ड करूँ वन लॉजिक इज कॉस्ट विच इज हंड्रेड सेकेंड लॉजिक इज इसकी मार्केट वैल्यू विच इज इधर हंड्रेड और से हंड्रेड एंड टेन द फेस वैल्यू हाँ तो मैं क्या 110 पे रिकॉर्ड करूँ और अगर 110 पे रिकॉर्ड किया तो कॉस्ट तो हंड्रेड ही लगी है तो डिफरेंस हंड्रेड टेन रुपीज का मेरा कहाँ जाएगा दिस इज वन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट दिस इज समथिंग विच इज बेसिकली टर्म डाज अकाउंटिंग फॉर इनिशियल रिकोगशन सो दिस फर्स्ट डिस्कशन वॉट वी टॉक अबाउट इज इनिशियल रिकोगशन किस पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू पे होगा किसी एक फाइनेंशियल असेट का इस एग्जाम्पल में ये जो डिवेंचर किसी और कंपनी का मेरे पास आया और अगर इनिशियल रिकोगशन में कहता हूँ कि कॉस्ट पे नहीं होगा एंड लेट से फेयर वैल्यू पे होगा और इस केस में फेस वैल्यू को फेयर वैल्यू 110 मानो मेरी कॉस्ट है हंड्रेड रुपीज की तो इन दोनों का जो डिफरेंस है वो डिफरेंस की अकाउंटिंग कैसे होगी दैट विल बी अनदर डिस्कशन विच आई टू डू दिस इज इनिशियल रिकोगशन ना लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं था आई सिंपली से हंड्रेड रुपीज का डिवेंचर मैंने हंड्रेड रुपीज में ले लिया है एंड इट्स टेन परसेंट डिवेंचर and this is uh, basically repayable after three years at par at par issued at par redeemed at par simple hai to to simple si baat hai main ise 100 rupaye pe initially record kar lunga aur uske baad sawal hi uthega ki 100 rupaye pe record karne ke baad what do i do say uh, uh, after one year i get uh, interest uh, received of 10 rupees however i say the fair value of this debenture इज वन जीरो फाइव तो लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल की अपने आप में क्या एक लिस्टेड डिवेंचर है उसकी मार्केट वैल्यू एक सौ पांच हो गई है क्यों मार्केट में कोरोना के कारण मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बहुत गिर गया और इस तरह के डिवेंचर अब आठ परसेंट पे इशू हो रहे तो ऑब्वियस ही बात है मुझे तो कंपनी फिक्स रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट का डिवेंचर है तीन साल का है तो मुझे तीन साल तक वो दस रुपए देगी तो मुझे मार्केट से ज्यादा ब्याज मिलेगा तो आज लोग मेरा डिवेंचर मुझसे फेस वैल्यू से ज्यादा पे खरीदने को तैयार है तो इसकी फेयर वैल्यू एक सौ पांच हो गई है अब अगला सवाल है मैं इसे किस पे रिकॉर्ड करूं शुड आई रिकॉर्ड एट एट हंड्रेड एंड फाइव और शुड आई कीप रिकॉर्डिंग एट एट हंड्रेड ओनली विच इज माई कॉस्ट और दी इनिशियल कैरिंग 
one logic to this particular answer could be that uh, to, 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 sir uh, we should record it at uh, what uh, we should ideally record it at uh, 100 rupees only being cost why uh, we should not see the fair values at all because hame bechna to hai nahi isko rakhna hai akhri tak aur main kahun ki agar bechna acha paisa mil raha hai to ho sakta hai bech bhi deta par becha nahi hai to fir kya main ise 105 pe leke jaun i don't know sir but i don't think conservatism should prohibit this that means this is a question of subsequent measurement when i say subsequent measurement as in how to record on the reporting date these kind of financial assets a simple thing could be that carry it at the carrying amount or the cost itself and one could be that let's uh, bring it at the fair values and that is uh, what brings us to our second discussion which is known as sm is what i say subsequent measurement whether subsequent measurement should be based on the cost so should it be based on the cost approach that is what is initially recorded or should it be based on the fair value approach and definitely if i go with the fair value approach there is going to be a gain or loss and when i say there is going to be a gain or loss the question is where this gain loss should go should it go to 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 prl or should it go to oci or should it go to reserves in this index there is no concept of bringing to reserves so we have two option prl or oci and within prl or oci we have then two options one is a reclassifiable oci and another one is a non reclassifiable oci यानी कि से फॉर एग्जाम्पल ईयर एंड पे अगर मैं दो मिनट के लिए मानू कि मैं इसे 105 पे लाऊंगा तो पांच रुपए का गेन पी में प्रॉफिट बुक कर दूं या अदर कॉम्प्रेंसिव इनकम में पांच रुपए की मैं गेन बुक कर दूं और अगर करूं तो रिक्लासिफाइबल या नॉन रिक्लासिफाइबल आई एम श्योर यू नो रिक्लासिफाइबल मीन दैट लेटर ऑन यू विल गेट अ प्रॉफिट वेन यू सेल इट द फाइव रुपीज ऑफ प्रॉफिट विच आर रिकोगनाइज इन ओसीआई इनिशियली यू विल ट्रांसफर इट बैक टू या पी and if i say that it is non reclassifiable so when i sell it i simply transfer oci balance to reserve for this uh, there's another revision video which i've shared on uh, in the as uh, which is what you can see and you can basically get an understanding of what this particular concept means but i'm sure uh, you might have studied uh, financial instruments so, or in days earlier so you know this acha i do remember that these revision videos are not specifically made for my own students and that is the reason i'm just taking these particular basics so that this having a mass relevance and everybody can actually have a look at it uh and get the most out of it so uh, what i'm saying is uh, the question is ki should i record it at 105 and if yes uh, what should i do with the profit and then obviously one particular day i will either actually redeem it or some way or the other i might sell it so that means de recognition and what happens with the de recognition gain or loss now the interesting part here is de recognition ka gain or loss is standard mein hamesha prl mein jayega इनिशियल रिकोगशन हमेशा फेयर वैल्यू पे होगा हमेशा का मतलब देर वुड बी सम एक्सेप्शन टू एट प्रमैली वेर अदर इंडिया सप्लाईज लाइक वन वन फाइव में क्रेडिट सेल्स की है तो जो डेटर है वो भी एक फाइनेंशियल सेट है बट उसकी इनिशियल रिकोगशन वैल्यू वुड बी द ट्रांजेक्शन प्राइस एस पर वन वन फाइव विल कम टू दैट एस्पेक्ट लेटर ऑन बट यूजली इट विल बी फेयर वैल्यू योर इल बी प्योर एल हाउ एवर योर इट कुड बी कॉस्ट अप्रोच ऑल्सो और फेयर वैल्यू अप्रोच ऑल्सो इसका मतलब आपको एक चीज समझ में आ गई शायद की किसी पर्टिकुलर फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट का इन दिस एग्जांपल दिस डिबेंचर विच आई हैव इसकी अकाउंटिंग इनिशियली और सेल के समय डी रिकग्नेशन के समय क्या होगी दिस इज मॉडल इज गोइंग टू रिमेन सेम इन एवरी केस व्हाट इज गोइंग टू चेंज इज बेसिकली द ईयर एंड ऑफ द रिपोर्टिंग डेट दैट मींस द सब्सिक्वेंट मेजरमेंट either it will be continuing at cost or it will be measured at fair value and in fair value whether the profit or loss will go to prl or it will go to oci and these particular methods in this particular standard are termed as acm amortized cost method prl which is termed as fptpl fair value through profit or loss method and these two methods are known as fptoci or feoci which is fair value through other comprehensive income jaise main kehta hu feoci r and feoci nr which is reclassifiable or non reclassifiable now the question basically arises is which amongst this is i have to choose and this choice is not up to you purely it depends on certain rules and logics this is the first thing which you need to understand is particular debenture investment ko main meri books mein kis par value karunga at the end of the year is what the question is and this primarily depends on two things one is my nature of business and the second thing is uh, the nature of this particular instrument i repeat my nature of business and the nature of this particular instrument quick tips first see the nature of this particular instrument tell me one thing is this particular interest instrument something in fact forget it let's let me you know kind of uh, not teach you the indices let me help you in fact uh, give you some tips and in fact uh, apan discuss karte hain na ek kaam karte hain kisi tarah se indices banane ki koshish karte hain rather than padhne ki 
मुझे एक बात बताओ आप कोई चीज खरीदते हो तो आपको उसकी मार्केट वैल्यू में इंटरेस्ट कब होगा जब आप उस चीज को आखिरी तक वेन यू बाय समथिंग वेन विल यू बी इंटरेस्टेड इन द मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ इट वेन यू आर गोइंग टू कीप इट होल्ड इट टिल दी एंड और वेन यू आर गोइंग टू इवन लिक्विडेटेड बिफोर दैट इफ यू गेट अ गुड रिटर्न एंड दैट प्रिसाइसली ब्रिंग्स मी टू द क्वेश्चन ऑफ वॉट इज योर बिजनेस is your business model to hold this till maturity and the answer is yes then in that case you can use cost method if your business model is not to hold till maturity that means either you trade frequently in this or you might trade or you might hold you're not sure about it you in fact do both the things in fact that is your business model being opportunistic what matters to me is nothing except money so i have one principle in life which is what money matters everything else is something which is a derivative of it so derivative ye bhi aayega uh, but anyways uh, so uh, what i'm trying to say in this particular situation is that uh, agar aapka business model purely apne is particular instrument ko aakhri tak hold karne ka hai aur aap usse sirf principle lena chahte hain iska matlab you are actually not interested in any fancies apne jeevan mein as such hum kya hain hame koi romanch romanch nahi chahiye bhaiya simple adventure at 10% interest i just want my interest and principle back that is what my objective of the business is business model is just to hold it till maturity if that is the case you can go with cost model if that is not the case the cost model is never ever available to you so cost model is only 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 available to those set sort of entities whose business model is to hold to maturity and when i say to hold to maturity it also means what should be the nature of the financial instrument the financial instrument should also have a nature that it does has a maturity so the second question is my choice of method depends on two things one is what is my business model and second what is the nature of the instrument the nature of the instrument should be such that uh, the instrument is basically having specified contractual cash flows that simply or you can solely say solely represents payment of principal and interest solely for payment of principal and interest which is basically also termed as the sppi test So I have two tests. One is known as the business model test, and second one is known as the SPPI test. This is instrument specific, and the business model test is uh, entity specific. If the nature of the instrument is such that it does satisfies the SPPI test, which is the instrument is solely and solely for payment of principal and interest that's about it normally is test ko prove karne ke liye aap ise issuer ke point of view se dekho ki issuer ne jo instrument issue kiya hai wo instrument mein ultimately kya sirf wo principal aur byaj dene wala hai similarly holder kya is instrument se primarily sirf principal aur byaj lene wala hai if that is the case it satisfies the spppi test iska matlab kya hai ab ek cheez samjho if you are running a business and this particular business you are having a government company which is into telecom sector and you have some surplus funds and you want to invest it why will you invest will you invest it in the equity market to basically takes the benefit and the advantages of the ups and downs no up to downs ke advantage honge ups ke to bache nahi but nevertheless you will not be doing that what you will rather be doing is you will invest in some government securities or safe investments where the risk is almost negligible and you get a fixed rate of return because that's not your core business to invest and make money out of it and that is precisely when you say that uh, you will invest in instruments like debentures corporate bonds fixed deposits national savings certificates government securities all these securities all these investments are one common thing that they are solely made for payment of a principal and an interest on it and that is why they satisfy the sppi test so instrument satisfies the sppi test and the business model is to hold to maturity then in that case you have the cost method otherwise in every other case you have to use some or the other fair value method which fair value method to use if your business is to trade irrespective of the nature of instrument you have to use fvtpl that means fair value through profit or loss and if you say that your business model is actually to hold or sell then in that case you can use feoci which is fair value through other comprehensive income however the ins- india is also specifies that in case of the nature of the instrument is not solely for payment of principal and interest like an equity instrument so if i have given my money so say for example i had some more money in my tijori and uh, uh, as an uh, uh, 
so i put out uh, you know i took out some more money and uh, instead of uh, what i did is i i gave this particular money and against this particular money i got some equity shares and uh, what equity shares hai kya bhai apne paas kuch so let's say for example okay so this is an equity saving certificate so i got this to maine ye paise diye aur maine paise deke badle mein is company ko ye paisa diya aur is company se maine badle mein kya kiya iske equity shares le liye अब ये एक सर्टिफिकेट है इस इक्विटी शेयर्स में आप मुझे बताओ क्या ये इक्विटी शेयर खरीदने का मेरा प्योर ऑब्जेक्टिव खुद ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ बाइंग दिस इक्विटी शेयर सोली एंड सोली बी जस्ट टू गेट इंटरेस्ट एंड प्रिंसिपल री कवर्ड आउट ऑफ दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट नो बिकॉज आई एम एक्चुअली वॉन्टिंग टू शेयर प्रॉफिट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कंपनी विच कुड गो मी ग्रेटर देन इंटरेस्ट रिटर्न हाई रिस्क हाई रिटर्न सिक्योरिटी इज दैट मीन दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट डज नॉट सेटिसफाइज दी एस पी पी आई टेस्ट सो आई हैव दिस एंड आई हैव अ रिडीमेबल डिवेंचर दिस सेटिसफाइज दी एस पी पी आई टेस्ट दिस डज नॉट दिस इज नॉट सेटिसफाइंग दी SPPI does because this is not purely giving me principal and interest, and that is why such investments will never be measured at cost. And for this, there is only one method, which is FETPL. Now, when I say FETPL, there is a problem. Hundred rupees investment, if it goes to hundred and five, now let's understand. So, say for example, I bought a particular instrument on say AAA first of March, and I bought it for hundred rupees. This is actually the initial value. Say on thirty first March, which is my balance sheet date. let's say this zoomed up to 120 and then on 10th of april i actually sold this off and this say was sold at 115 now what do i say do i say i made a profit of 20 and then i incurred a loss of 5 or i simply say i actually made a profit of 15 when i sold it that means in the next year Ideally, persons who trade will rather say that I made a profit initially of twenty, but I made a loss of five in the next year because they will measure their performance. In fact, they made a very good investment in the previous year, ending March year, because they actually got a one month twenty percent gain on it. But actually, they didn't sell it in the right point of time. That is when the next year they had to sell it five rupees below its peak price, which was at thirty first March. This uh, presentation, if you show twenty profit in the previous year and five loss in the current year, this gives a right presentation of an investment company as to how its investment division has been doing in the previous and the current year. And that is why what is most appropriate in this particular case is that you should actually use FETPL, which is you should measure on thirty first March subsequent measurement at hundred and twenty twenty rupees profit transfer to PRL next year five rupees loss transfer to PRL. But a company may say that this is leading to booking of unrealized profit doesn't matter because in any particular case, when you are distributing dividends, your section one twenty three say unrealized profit will not be available for distribution of dividends. So dividend point of view, say it will not really create too much of an impact. But yes, your profitability will increase, your EPS would increase. So company will say that I don't really want to increase my EPS due to such unrealized profit. There could have been losses as well. And conservatism does not definitely apply. This uh, index is not based on those particular principles of conservatism for the very simple logic. Because when you make investments, a lot of investment will be under gain and losses. So you cannot just say I will book loss, loss, loss. I'm not profit, profit, profits. So for all these particular matters, what has been given is you have an option that if you really don't want an FTPL thing when SPPI test is not met, like an investment in equity instrument, then you have an option that you can go for FUOCI, but then you'll have to go with FUOCI in our non-reclassifiable, which means the gain or loss, whatever it is, you'll have to transfer it to OCI in non-reclassifiable. And subsequently, when you sell this particular investment, so if this was FUOCI, you know, twenty rupees of profit will go to OCI in our non-reclassifiable. Next year, you'll have to book a loss of five rupees. And uh, apart from that, you will actually have to not have the option of reclassifying the twenty rupees of profit which you booked earlier in OCI to PRL. In fact, that will directly get transferred to reserves in SOCI, which is statement of changes in equity. Because this is FUOCI, you know, this is only applicable for equity instruments. However, let's talk about this debenture instrument. This is more interesting because this has more possibilities. So I took a debt instrument, which is basically what 10% debenture, three years at par redeemable, at par issued, and interest of 10% per annum payable every year. First year and the fair value became 105. Year now one. Let's talk about the instrument. Is this instrument giving me purely principal and interest? Yes. Second, is my intention now? Let me come from the entity's perspective. Is my intention to hold it till maturity? Yes. Then I'll carry it at cost. So 100, 100, 100 is what it will be carried at. But second, say for example, I say that uh, mm, my intention is to trade in this. I will trade it whenever the value increases. I'll sell it off because it's a listed debenture. Then I will go with FETPL. But as I am not sure with my particular uh, business model. In fact, I am sure with my business model. But uh, my business model says that you know whatever is advantages, do that. You may hold it till maturity. You may not hold it. You may not trade it. You may hold it. You may not hold it. You may trade it. 
And in such cases, the uh, India says that it is better that in such cases, since it is satisfying the SPPI test, that means uh, there is a possibility you may hold it till the maturity because the nature of the instrument is such that it is giving principal and interest. So you will hold it till maturity. There's a possibility, but you're not sure. So you take this profit or loss to OCI, but into reclassifiable. Reclassifiable means when you sell it, the reclassifiable profit or loss will get re-transferred from OCI to PRL. And this is the way you will have to choose one of these particular methods. So principally you can say there are just two approaches, cost or fair value. But methods you could say there are more than two which could be fair value through PRL or fair value through OCI and cost method. And fair value through OCI could be non-reclassifiable or reclassifiable. Please remember all these discussions, what you are doing is from the financial asset perspective, financial liability perspective, usually we go with only the cost method and only in rare circumstances we will use fair value through profit or loss FE TPL method, which is primarily for financial guarantee, accounting mismatch and certain situations. So my discussion here is actually basically what, please understand, my whole discussion here in this 109 at a initial point of, uh, initial standpoint would be my uh, uh, whole discussion, I would say, at the initial standpoint, would be, would be, would be, excuse me, to first identify as to which method is applicable and then understand all these methods in terms of how these methods work like. Because it's going not to be very, very simple as to how to understand these methods. Because here, let's say, for example, in this case, what is the cost? 100 rupees is the cost. But what if this debenture were issued at par? Let's say, for example, they were issued at discount or at a premium or say, for example, there was some cost involved like an agent commission or stamp duty or some charges which we call as the transaction cost. Then what do I do? Uh, what if the debenture was a variable interest rate debenture wherein I was getting a rate which was linked to the RBI repo rates and a spread above it? So uh, definitely even in cost method, I'll have so many of the other probabilities. Can do, uh, Could there be an impairment? Uh, you know, uh, I subscribe to these particular debentures of a bank, uh, let's say for example, a Yes Bank or a Punjab uh, Maharashtra Cooperative Bank. Then in that case, what happens in those situations? Or uh, uh, these deposits belong to these banks? So can there be an impairment? So there'll be a lot of complications which will come in, not going to be very simple, even the cost method. And then fair value again, uh, how do I get the fair value? What do I mean by fair value? There could be multiple fair values. How do I calculate those things? And what is the frequency of fair valuation? How do I do my accounting entries and stuff like that? You poor discussion, all this is something which is going to affect your subsequent measurement kind of a discussion. Initial recognition, you'll be surprised to know is always at fair value. And this is actually a big deal of discussion because please understand when you buy a fixed set of property plant equipment, you always initially record it at cost. So you buy 100 rupees of land at, uh, 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 let's say, for example, uh, 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 I say that, uh, okay, cool. Uh, what I say is land purchased, let's say at 100 rupees. At what price would you record it? I would simply say, Land account debit to bank. So rupees is Amina, sir. Come on. Example. That's about it. What if I say that the fair value of this particular land was 120 rupees. But uh, 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 I bought it at 100 only because uh, uh, it was a distress sale of seller. So seller actually was under distress liquidity crunch. So 120 cheese 120 thing. It sold off immediately to me at 100 rupees. I made a gain of 20 rupees. Do I recognize this gain of 20 rupees initially? No, I simply record my land at cost because India 16 says initially all property plant equipment or intangible assets should be recognized at cost. However, if this was a business combination transaction wherein I bought a particular business which includes a land for which I have given a PC of 100 rupees but the fair value of the land is 120, in that case I would have valued this land at 120 rupees and not 100 rupees being fair value because India's 103 business combination requires that. In fact, India's 16, India's 38 intangible assets. India's 16 PP also says business combination acquired assets initially should be recognized at the fair value. And there is a question in November 2019 CA final new course paper on this particular matter which the institute has solved in the suggested answer inappropriately and I have raised a query on that and there is a YouTube video also which I have posted to watch that particular thing. And I have questioned the suggested answer of the institute. I have also written a mail to them. I have not yet received any particular response from them. I do hope that I will get a response and we will make sure that we do get a response on it. But it is surprising that uh, paper check 
बात सही हो रही है या गलत दैट इज वन अनादर एस्पेक्ट बट वॉट आई एम सेंग इज द बेसिस ऑफ चेकिंग द होल पेपर दैट मीन्स द सजेस्टेड आंसर विच मे नॉट बी द बेसिस इट वुड बी द मार्किंग स्कीम बट आई एम एज्यूमिंग दैट द सजेस्ट आंसर मार्किंग स्कीम विल नॉट बी कंसेप्चुअली डिफरेंट एंड देर इज अ क्वेश्चन इन टर्म्स ऑफ द सजेस्टेड आंसर एंड इट्स अ एट मार्क क्वेश्चन विच दे हैव गिवन द सजेस्टेड आंसर टू माई माइंड इज नॉट करेक्ट एंड आई हैज द क्वेश्चन ऑन दैट आई हैव पुट अ यूट्यूब वीडियो ऑन इट and i am really surprised as to how they have solved it they have solved it using some old concepts which were there in accounting standard 26 on intangible asset which is no way applicable in india and i am really really surprised how could they have solved it like this so in any particular case once i get a response on that i'll share a view in terms of what the institute view is and what should be the way forward and uh, things apart coming on to this particular aspect a uh, business combination i would have recorded at 120 and capital reserve of 20 but in case of a normal purchase acquisition of this particular asset i would have recorded this at 100 now my question to you is if it was a business combination 120 and then 20 would go to capital reserve or reduced from goodwill now here if i talk about the fact that this is actually not say for example a land and i say that instead of a land i purchase a financial asset a financial asset then what do i record it india says is financial asset initially will always be recorded at fair value but i have paid a cost of 100 and the fair value is 20 so what happens to the difference 20 is the first thing which you need to discuss and the india says what and this is something which is very surprising because it is very very much required because india says that we want financial instruments to be recognized at fair values usually unless there are some exceptions which we'll come to because for the very simple reason is that uh, these uh, are financial asset which means i have given some money to you what is the value of this particular money the money which i have given to you is the fair value of this particular contract that's about it finish so the value should be the same if it is not the same that means there's something else which is going behind this you need to identify which means what so i gave you 100 rupees as a security deposit let's say for example aapko fast ki franchise lena hai so you want a fast franchise in your city so you said that okay so you want to take a franchise and i said okay there's a small security deposit which you'll have to pay He says, "Okay, what's the money?" And I say, "Let's say, for example, you have to pay me hundred rupees as a security deposit. So what you do is you give me hundred rupees as a security deposit. Three years contract I enter into, and after three years I'll be returning this hundred rupees back to you." You say, "What about interest on this hundred rupees?" I say, "This is interest-free security deposit, boss, which you will have to give it to me, and I'll return it as it is back to you." You know, you have given caution money in the school. You don't get interest on it, and you remembered everything, and you said, "Ha, sir, caution money, but it didn't come out in the school." So, anyways, so you agreed, and you said, "Okay, fine, that's okay, and I'll give you hundred rupees security deposit." Now, please understand, for you, it is a financial asset because you've given me the money, and you have the right to receive the cash back. For me, it's a financial liability. Now, at what price would you record this particular thing initially? so the cost is 100 but the fair value is not 100 because you will be getting 3 years later 100 rupees and you know 100 rupees given 3 years later is not equal to 100 rupees today so if i discount it when my cost of capital the present value say for example if i discount it at 10% should come to around what so let's say for example 100 rupees discounted by 10% for 3 years the present value should come to 75 that means for you the fair value of this is just 75 rupees So you've given me hundred rupees, but the worth is seventy five. Twenty five is a sacrifice of interest which you have suffered. Why? Because uh, you have taken a franchisee for me. So that means that twenty five of sacrifice are actually a type of franchisee fees. You should actually recognize in your books debit uh, franchisee fees uh, or deferred franchisee fees. Uh, 25 which is a type of a deferred cost for you and you should debit the financial asset 75 rupees and then you should credit bank with 100 rupees that means you have recorded the financial asset at fair value for me who has accepted the security deposit for me this is a financial liability i will also record it at fair value and because i have to pay 100 rupees not today 3 years later for me also the fair value is 75 so 25 is a franchisee fees which i have recorded from you in advance i could say and i will book this franchisee fees as an in income of the period of next 3 years or maybe as per indes 115 or the respective standard what sort of becomes applicable on this so what i'm trying to say in this particular case is everything initially is recorded at fair value and this is something where now i really start with my revision because here till now what i've done is i've just given you some inputs and tidbits just to give you an understanding about what exactly you know the financial instrument thing is all about and uh, now we'll be referring to this particular book in case if you are my student i have this particular book just keep this open and just refer it during the revision videos if you're not just uh consider on the screen i'll be scrolling over the pages so that you can definitely see in terms of what i'm explaining here and then you can follow those particular instructions and at the same point of line please understand if you really want to buy this particular book for your own revision senses because that'll be very handy and useful for you for exam time to time then in that case you can order it at a website which is fast.edu.in and you can place an order there however we're not dispatching it now we are only sharing the digital notes and uh, the dispatch will only happen once the lockdown is over so this is what we call as the brahmastra brahmastra 
I'll show you the index. This basically covers introduction, India's based financial statement, schedule three. Presentation of financial statement in days one. Ye jo main pehle class mein padhata hu just to get a basic uh, understanding of it because I understand student coming from intermediate has been studying accounting standard and the old format of the balance sheet in Schedule Three Division One all throughout. Now this is Schedule Three Division Two, which is altogether a different format where assets come in first, not the equity and liabilities. So in that sense, uh, you need to first understand. Then then you come to financial instrument. Despite it is one of the trickiest and the toughest topic, but I believe class mein initially you do most toughest and the trickiest of the topics. Then you are fine because then you have done. the you know uh, it's like eating the frog you've done the most difficult thing at the first and then what you are left with is comparatively the simpler things and uh, this is something which really develops a core understanding of the whole chapter so financial instrument consolidation business combination and share based payment i will quickly jump to 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 financial instrument financial instrument in days uh, 32 is something which i've already shared on youtube i just showed you the videos you can look at those particular videos there and then uh, sorry this is consolidation this is financial instrument 109 what we are now discussing so now i'll give you a quick uh, tidbit in terms of what all things we'll be covering in the revision video and this is also the way i actually cover these particular things in the class so you can just have a quick look uh, first you need to understand uh, what should be the accounting method first initial recognition you don't need to understand the method but for subsequent measurement but we need to first understand this logic to move ahead There are primarily two methods. One is the cost-based approach, which is known as the amortized cost method. And fair value, you have basically two methods: FETPL and FEOCI, which is RR and NR. Now, when we talk about which of these methods to be used, so in this 109 says that uh, this uh, discussion of which method to be used for financial asset or a financial liability. Uh, this is something similar to what we have discussed. Depends on two things. One is the business model test and the SPPI test, which I just told you is explained here. Yeah, initial pages I'll be sharing on the fast dot edu dot i n download section of the notes, uh, where you can download these initial pages and go through it, so that you'll get a textual understanding of it. But in the revision, I'm actually not uh, reading through it. This is a mind map uh, which is given in the institute module, but this is a mind map which uh, I have alternatively developed, which is more easier for me to understand. And I think student also this they find it more easy to kind of keep it in their heads. What I say is, when you make a choice of the method, just simply remember first, what is the nature of this instrument? Will this instrument give you purely principal and interest? If the answer is no, cost method is ruled out. You have to use FETPL only. Except if you want, you have the option to use FEOCI, but that'll be non-reclassifiable. And since there's a vocable option, you'll have to keep using that particular method itself all throughout the period. So SPPI is not satisfied. Use FEDPL. If it is satisfied, then you see what is the entity's business model. Is it to hold only? Oh yes, it is to hold only. Then use ACM. It is to hold only or sell. Then you can go with FEOCIR. If it is to trade, then you have to go with FEDPL. But remember, in these two cases, you also have the option to go to FEDPL because India's always allows that you can use FEDPL as an option if you want to. all these options are to be exercised initially and these are instrument to instrument specific option and you don't have to uh, uh, take these options collectively for all categories of instrument these are some examples uh, we should be definitely going through despite the facts or revision video to just to get a complete good understanding of it what it says is it says that uh, <coughs> Let's say I have a twelve percent redeemable debenture. Now redeemable debenture and a fixed interest. That means it will satisfy the SPPI test. And since it satisfies the solely for payment of principal and interest test, it means uh, the, the 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 ACM option will be available provided the business model is to hold only. But if the business model is not to hold only, it is to sell or trade only. Then FETPL. If it is to hold or sell either or of it, then in that particular case I will go with FEOCI. But in ACM or FEOCI, R I have option of FETPL. So let's see. 12 percent debenture, 12 percent debenture, 12 percent debenture. SPPI test whether it will pass. In all these cases, it is yes. If your business model is to hold, then you will use ACM. If it is to hold or sell, use OCIR. If it is to trade, use FETPL. You don't have an alternative choice of method except there is a star that in every particular case, a uh, 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 FETPL option is available with you. But if it is a 12% convertible debenture, interesting. Then what happens? So please understand, 12% convertible debenture. This may I will not be getting uh, on the due date uh, cash. I'll be getting equity shares. Please understand. Then the person who is buying this is not just getting pre-specified contractual cash flows of interest and principal. He is getting interest which is pre-specified in the contract, but he is not getting the principal. In fact, he is getting equity share which value will be keep on it will keep on fluctuating. Hence, you may get a gain or a loss out of it. So that means that this is not something which you are buying because you are just interested in interest. देखो logic क्या है? I'll just give you the logic. Logic is 
if you are only interested in principal and interest that means your money back with an interest then you would have taken an fd or a redeemable debenture or something which gives you your principal and interest back in these cases you can avoid the fair values but if you are buying something wherein uh, you will be getting equity shares definitely you will be interested in the market value of the equity shares because uh, the way it goes up and down it will actually change your heartbeat because you will feel a sense of profit or loss in such cases uh, going with the cost method may not be appropriate because a company buying such particular type of debentures is really interested in the fair valuation of it that is why you have to use fair value method in such cases you have to use because sppl test is not met you met you have to use fetpl except you have the option that initially itself you can use fpoci but nr and this is an irrevocable option you cannot change it later on so sppi 12% convertible debenture whether your method is to hold or it is to hold or sell or trade in all cases you will have only fetpl fetpl or fetpl option however here you have a choice of fpoci nr but not in case where you are intending to trade so please understand anything which gives you simple logic hai i have grown up and my age does not permit me to take risk i want an instrument which gives me a fixed return these kind of returns usually will meet the spppi test so sir simply aap ye bol do na fixed interest rate bond or debenture i will not say that because uh, you know uh, 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 if you say that i have taken a bond which gives me a variable rate of interest where the variable rate is directly linked with the rbi repo rates then that also is basically giving me market rates of interest so that is also satisfying the spppi test but if i take an instrument which will give me my principal back and during the tenure will give me interest which is linked to the change in the gold uh, index definitely the one who is buying is not really interested in a fixed principal and interested on on its investment in fact it is interested in the returns which you usually get in a commodity like gold and that means this instrument what you have bought is not purely for interest and principal but to speculative nature of gain is what you are interested in it's a risky investment simple said that is why this will not satisfy the spppi test so a debenture or a bond which gives you a fixed rate of interest could be satisfying the spppi test giving variable but a variable linked to let's say for example uh, inflation rate or uh, uh, linked to let's say for example the repo rate rbi rate uh, bank rate uh, again these could be uh, satisfying the sppi test but uh, linked a variable interest rate where the base rate is linked to equity index or uh, a gold bullion index will definitely not meet the sppi test i hope you understanding what i'm saying so based on this you first identify what is the nature of this particular instrument and what is the model of the entity these two things will help you to decide the method which will help you on the subsequent measurement thing however initial recognition in every particular case of financial asset or liability will be done 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 at fair value only where will the gain or loss go so you remember two things here one you will record it at fair value and the gain or loss will be transferred to prl if the fair value is based on level 1 input as per index 113 fair value means fair value measurement in days 113 says fair value is the price at which an asset could be sold or a liability could be settled between in an orderly transaction between market participants that means in a market which has active number of buyers and sellers who are regularly trading and dealing in those assets and liabilities or securities so in such a market uh, where you are able to sell the price uh, 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 which is a market price like a, a, a stock exchange where the price is actually something which is not manipulated because it's an active market price so one cannot really manipulate it so that uh, is if the basis of fair value then the difference of fair value and your cost will be transferred to prl however if your fair value is based on any other input like a unlisted company share value determined based on the net assets or based on the eps into price earning ratio which is not purely based on available market prices and is a derived value then in that case the difference will be accounted as per respective indices which could be in days 115 revenue or uh, leases in days 116 because in you see the lectures of lease in the last lecture i've talked about interest fee security deposit in a lease contract how to account for those cases those questions are there in the study material which will marginally change now because of 116 coming into picture because the institute had given the solution in days 109 of those particular questions as per indices 109 when in days 116 was not in picture uh, uh anyway so what i'm saying is uh, that uh, if the fair value is based on level 1 input which is active market price you can say for understanding then difference goes to prl if it is any other input then it depends on the respective indices this is one second initial recognition you might have incurred some transaction cost what is transaction cost it is directly attributable cost directly attributable to the purchase that means if you would not have purchased that particular set that cost would not have incurred that means if i bought a debenture and i have basically paid a commission to an agent for buying that debenture then in that case this agent commission i would not have paid if i have not had bought that debenture so i will say it is an initial direct cost 
or a transaction cost. But if I say that I have basically paid a money to a researcher who has given me a research based on which I have purchased this particular adventure, whether I would have purchased that adventure or not, I would have made that payment to that particular person. That means this particular money which I have paid is actually not directly attributable and hence this is not a transaction cost that will go to PRL in every case. If it is directly attributable, it qualifies to be a transaction cost. Transaction cost under two methods. So transaction cost accounting is dependent on the choice of method which we are now going to discuss for subsequent measurement. And if it is based on FETPL, transaction cost goes to PRL. If it is based on ACM or FEOCI, it will be adjusted from the initial recognized value. That means the carrying amount initially would be fair value plus minus transaction cost. Why so? FETPL, if you increase the cost, any which ways when you bring it to fair value gain or loss will go to PRL. But FEOCI, if you do not increase the cost and book the transaction cost to PRL, subsequently when there is a gain, the gain will not go to PRL, it will go to OCI. So you are booking an expense in PRL and you are booking a gain in OCI, which is a mismatch. So I add it to the cost and then I calculate the gain or loss and put it to OCI. That is why I add it to the cost. And ACM method, otherwise I am not really interested to book a gain or loss. In fact, I will rather adjust this particular cost. I will in fact amortize this cost over the period or life of the particular asset. And that is why this method is also called as the amortized cost method. So now what I've done is I've given you the initial recognition basis of it. I've also given you in terms of how to initially recognize this particular, in fact, uh, what will be the accounting for the difference which uh, actually comes on the initial recognition. And I've told you in terms of what accounting methods are there and how to choose them. Now we'll have to one by one study these accounting methods and uh, how these methods actually work out because exam questions, numericals one will be based on this. So there are in total 16 topics which we have to study. In which next we have to talk about amortized cost method, then the fair value method, FETPL, OCI, RNNR. Then these are the various other things which you can just quickly go through it. This is all what we'll have to discuss. So in this revision, we'll cover all these particular aspects. This will cover up in days 109 financial instruments recognition measurement, which will give you the whole accounting of it. 107 talks about disclosures, which is uh, 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 not something which is very, very significant for the exams. However, as of now, we are focusing on 109. This is part one of my revision. I will actually want some feedback from you now that uh, in terms of one, the language if I'm using pure English, is that fine with you? Any fine tunings that you require in these particular things, accordingly, I'll share the other revision videos on this particular standard with you. But uh, what I'm trying to basically do here is just try to simplify these particular whole concepts so that you really get one basic good idea about what is the thought process of the people who made this particular index and how they have kind of moved across. Please understand the standard does not in any which ways explains uh, whatever I have explained it basically one two three four it simply starts explaining the methods but I thought that it's very important for you to first understand as to what is the base and logic based on this this is going in fact the standard also does not say that there are two approaches cost and fair value approach this is some simplification which we do so that uh, now when we study any particular kind of instrument you can see that instrument and then your mind really starts working like this that okay first let's see the instrument is this purely just to get interest and principle back Cool. If not FETPL, yes, then in that case, next, what is the intention of the entity? Is the model to hold only? Okay, ACM. Not to hold only, but uh, to sell trade only, then FETPL. Either or, then in that case, FPOCI. And this is the way you think once you get that particular understanding right in your heads. Then it's very easy for you to approach the questions and then identify what should be the appropriate answer to it. This is more so from financial asset perspective. Financial liability primarily are cost-based and liability-based. Once we study these methods, we will simultaneously study how to account it for financial liability also when we see the accounting portion for this. That will give you a complete idea in terms of how to apply these particular methods and then we'll have to come to the special topics which you could say is like de-recognition, collaterals, modification of cash flow, very important income recognition, embedded derivative, I'm sure. Derivative and embedded derivatives are one particular topics where you really, really need some inputs uh, uh, because there's some confusion among students uh, not our students, definitely, because I kind of harp on this very, very much uh, between, uh, you know, compound financial instrument, derivatives, embedded derivatives. In fact, some students also get confused that compound financial instrument concept in itself is only, only and only for the issuer. It is not for the investor, whereas embedded derivative is something which is uh, basically uh, all together. It depends on the nature of the instrument. So in any which case, uh, I'll go with the concepts and the logics here and there. When I'm taking the accounting aspects, I'll also give you the logics for those particular things. And this is basically... Basically, what I want uh, from your feedback on this particular video in terms of what you really expect from me in the next revision video for financial instruments so that when they, we can accordingly uh, tailor it uh, to meet your needs. Thank you so much and uh, please keep safe uh, from whatever is going around and uh, Thank you.